Games are full of secrets and things you don't know about yet. Yet being the key word. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 secret areas in video games you didn't know existed. As a quick disclaimer, that is of course what a secret is. It would no longer be a secret area if you knew it existed, so after this video is done, there will be 10 less secrets in the world. Take that Illuminati, stick that in your pipe and smoke it, shady secret organization of elites that control everything. Nyeh. That's such a real disclaimer, was <laughs> I'll stop messing around. Let's get going. Starting off with number 10, the secret party room in Cyberpunk 2077. Most of the secrets in Cyberpunk 2077 are out there and known by just about everybody. At this point, who doesn't know about the hidden Arasaka Tower arcade game and the hidden room in that? Well, maybe you haven't, but at least us at Game Ranks, that's, uh, that's ground we've tread already. So for this entry, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna look at something a little different. There is a bunch of hidden weapons dotted around the new district of Dogtown, but for this entry, I specifically want to talk about ones hidden behind a locked door. The only way to get inside, and I have no idea how anyone is supposed to figure this out, but you have to wait until 4 a.m. and the door will unlock, revealing a secret room filled with partying NPCs. The inside of the room completely out of place uh, with how dumpy the outside is, so who knows what the deal is, uh, but it's got a unique power shotgun called the Paws Hair X Mod 2. All the other weapons you can find just laying around, but this one's uh, only obtainable by going into the secret door in the middle of the night. How anyone found any of this stuff, I do not know, but it's a secret room. And you know what they say, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And so I say, secret be gone. And number nine is Spider-Man 2, Antarctica. Less a secret area and more of an out of bounds glitch. This is still a, a really entertaining place to explore, even though you're not supposed to be here. You know the mission uh, where you're chasing the black cat and she's going through all the portals? There's one memorable moment where you go through a portal and appear in the polar ice caps for a few seconds before you go back through another portal uh, back to New York City to continue the chase. It's a fun little set piece moment, but uh, you ever thought of uh, just not leaving? Oh, you get game over. I, I guess I should have seen that coming. Wasting too much time in this place, just make it so Black Cat gets too far away from you and you fail the mission. That's what keeps you from exploring. But after a whole bunch of trial and error to figure out what to do, I realize that you have to turn the difficulty all the way down to the easiest setting. Then the game doesn't penalize you at all for lagging behind your target. Now it's just a matter of jumping into the water and going for a swim. Eventually you hit an invisible wall, but if you keep dodging forward, you'll eventually break out of the playable area and be free to explore the Arctic Circle as much as you want. Uh, unfortunately, there's not really a lot to see in this place. Uh, at least you get to the ridge, fall under the map, and find a low poly version of New York hiding back here. Uh, there's nothing to interact with because there's no collision, so you can't spend a whole lot of time in this bizarre in New York, but it's still a pretty weird sight to see, especially with the floating glaciers in the air <laughs> and all this flying New York travel. Ah. And number eight is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the hidden area zero cave. It's not quite as flashy as the Spider-Man 2 one, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that, but it's still pretty impressive how well hidden it is. In area zero, the final area of the game, there are a number of little secrets dotted around for adventurous players to discover, uh, but this one specific cave remained hidden for a long time before anyone realized it was there. Hidden behind a waterfall near the entrance, which makes it sound like it's obvious, might I say. Um, it's not. Like, look what you have to do and it's, it's really easy to miss so if you've missed it and you feel like i'm saying it's obvious it's not obvious it's a long fall down and you need to know exactly where you're going to stop it, it to stop yourself from missing it but if you glide at just the right moment you get inside and you find a pretty nondescript cave Not that flashy, but for whatever reason, there's a pretty high chance of uh, chances to spawn, which gives you a uh, huge experience for killing them, making this place one of the best grinding spots in the whole game. 
And number seven is Batman Arkham City, uh, the rest of Gotham City. Ever wanted to see what's going on in the rest of Gotham outside the oppressive walls of Arkham City without buying Arkham Knight? Well, you're not supposed to be able to leave, but that doesn't stop people from doing it anyway. Uh, best, most reliable way of getting over the walls of the makeshift prison sounds insane, but really works. What you do is position Batman a very specific way in the ledge and then auto fire ice grenades. Gotta be ice grenades for it to work. Don't ask me why. Uh, I'm not the one who makes the rules. I am the messenger. Do not shoot me. But if the stars are aligned and everything's set up properly, Batman will start floating in the air. You drop back down to Earth if you leave Batman idle even for a second. So the trick here is to keep spamming ice grenades as fast as you can. You'll keep going up and up and up till you got enough power to get over the walls and get into the rest of the city. Uh, there is nothing to do here, though. It's just a bunch of low-poly models you're meant to see from a distance. Nothing's got collision, but hey, it's fun, isn't it? You weren't supposed to get over these walls, and, and now you can see that it's all just cardboard cutouts. na 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 nothing and number six is the Lies of Peace secret starting room. For me, this one seemed pretty obvious, but looking around at comments around the internet, I guess a lot of people didn't know this place was actually here. A lot of Souls likes uh, enjoy hiding little secrets back at the start, because uh, Dark Souls did it, basically. But in this game's case, it, it doesn't seem possible, because at the start, it just seems like when you turn around, there's set dressing, um, and that door doesn't seem like it's meant to be open. Game's full of doors, actually, that are just scenery. So I can see why a lot of players would just assume there's nothing hidden back there. If you progress through the entire game and re-emerge at the train station near the end, the whole place has been overrun with monsters. Basically, uh, like a new area. It tells you that things have potentially changed, though. It's a clue. And uh, if you uh, realize that things might be different, you go back to the starting train car, keep going back, you find a new area. We are... Yes, behind the train car where you woke up. What is this? A hidden workshop that offers the players some clues and unlocks some unique dialogue with Geppetto. For lore hunters, it's an intriguing little area that offers a little more backstory on what's going on, but it's never a place uh, you, have, you have to find, so a lot of players overlook it. And number five is Splinter Cell's Secret Observation Room. The original Splinter Cell is looking pretty long in the tooth. Game came out back in 2002, which is over 20 years ago now. And after all this time, I uh, never knew about this area hidden in the tutorial. Getting here requires some setup. First, you got a wall jump to a floor outside of the training area to collect a lockpick. Then you take that all the way to the uh, end of the obstacle course to unlock a room, look at a computer, and get a special code. With that in your hand, now you have to walk back to the start of the training course and use that code to unlock a door to get up into the observation area. Up there, you can talk to the Grimm's daughter, the woman who doesn't get a consistent character design in the entire series. Uh, seriously, look it up. She looks completely different in every game. Pleased to meet you. Third Echelon lead programmer. You've done your homework. Some of it. I'm still a little foggy on my opset. The Operation Satellite Uplink. Basically just a multi-million tax dollar PDA but it'll tally everything you'll need to know to complete your missions, so make sure you're comfortable with the interface. It's not much, but I had no idea this was here, and considering how low the views on YouTube tutorials about it are, I don't think a lot of people remember this one either. And number four is the Metro Secret from A Hat in Time. Most of this game's secrets are pretty well known to fans, but this one, it, it caught me off guard, not gonna lie. Did you know, in the uh, DLC Metro level, which has, it's a great level, one of the best in the game, there's a secret area with an amazing secret for fans of uh, Yakuza and or Like a Dragon, depending on, I guess, how Western you are, and it, it doesn't matter. To find it, head to the green clean station and inspect this manhole cover that's pretty easy to overlook. When you do, a cat with a suspiciously familiar your eye patch he's gonna bust out of the manhole and attack the eye patch uh the random attack the name meow i see what you're doing i see what you're doing game it's an easter egg related to the majima everywhere system from uh kiwami one it's all totally intentional if you're not a fan this whole thing's pretty baffling meow jima like you, you you see that and you're like all right well that is a an in joke for something i am not a person familiar with it though it's one of those things you know it's an in joke and you know that you're uh not the target audience if you don't get it.
And number three is Control uh, in the Alan Wake DLC. There's a secret room. Uh, probably the, the most uh, convoluted secret in the game, um, which does involve multiple secret rooms, codes, and backwards lyrics. That's just the start of it. I'd be here all day if I play-by-played -play, uh, explaining what you do to get this secret area. But the basics are that there are some reverse lyrics in the song Take Control that plays during the Ashtray Maze segment of the main game. <laughs> Basically, if for whatever reason you didn't play Control before Alan Wake 2, it's a precursor to the lunacy of Herald of Darkness and Alan Wake 2, which, I mean, it's very clear that Remedy uh, is run by lunatics, I guess is the right way to put it. Anyway, the lines give some mysterious clues that were meaningless until the DLC came out. Following the extremely vague instructions in the lyrics, leads you through several secret rooms before finally settling on a clock that requires a specific number sequence to solve. If you do it right, you get a bunch of backstory on the Anderson brothers from Alan Wake, which all becomes relevant in the second game. The Valhalla Nursing Home, founded in 2014 for Odin and Tor Anderson for their twilight years. In terms of obscure secrets, it's one of the most elaborate uh, because it doesn't get any major rewards, just some backstory. Uh, but it's one of those secrets that's super easy to overlook. And probably it's one of the most interesting little segments in the game. And it laid a bunch of groundwork for Alan Wake 2 that, <laughs> just to be frank, you could totally miss. And number two is Hollow Knight's super secret rooms. There are so many little secrets in Hollow Knight that it's almost impossible to keep track of all of them. There's your average secrets, like a few hidden walls. The bigger secrets, like the secret ending and the White Palace. There's the deep in the weeds secrets, like the path of pain and the secret room in there. And when we arrive here, at the super secret rooms that don't even count towards map completion. These are rooms that are so hidden they don't show up on the map and they don't even count if you find them. Most are unmarked, so even discovering them is basically trial and error. The three that really stand out as hidden are the secret Dung Defender room, hidden in a breakable floor under the Dung Defender boss room, the hidden Hornet room in the Weaver's Den, which can only be reached by doing a crystal dash from the balcony in the deepest part of the kingdom, and the Mender Bug room, which is so obscure, I don't know how anyone figured it out. To find the last one, you need to kill the Mender Bug, who's working on a sign at the crossroads, a character that you might not realize even exists. Uh, I've seen him maybe once, if that. I'll be frank, I'm not sure if I saw it in the game or if I saw it in a video about the game but I certainly have only seen him like once well now more than once because now there's a video that has footage of him in it uh, that I'm looking directly at now but you get the point right you gotta kill the mender bug before he sees you because he bolts as soon as he does but if you manage to kill him his room will open up down in that little village in the forgotten crossroads if you ever wondered how to get in that house well this is how it's not much but it's so obscure and easy to miss that it had to go on the list and finally, at number one, Resident Evil 4's new secret room. It seems impossible that there would be something hidden in Resident Evil 4 after all these years, um, because it is. Yes, this is the original Resident Evil 4, yet somehow it has an entirely new little area to explore. This place got added to the game in the fan-made HD project, which was primarily about replacing the in-game textures with higher resolution ones. But the madmen behind this mod didn't stop there. They also added a secret room that was normally blocked behind some flimsy wooden planks but in this version of the game, you jump over them and you explore an entirely new area created by the modders using mostly pre-existing assets. The centerpiece is an HD version of the Plagueis model that was in Leon's chest, but also the place is filled with gems and an entirely new weapon attachment, the Silencer. All of this stuff modded into the game and kept totally hidden. I had no idea the HD version mod added anything, and I bet most of you thought the same thing. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.